Hi everybody! Today's focus is a viewer request. B. V. Armstrong asked me, how well does Dr. Bronner's work? So on my vinegar video, I had a comment from B. V. Armstrong and B. V. asked if I could test out Dr. Bronner's as well as dish soap. This video is just going to focus on Dr. Bronner's. So if you're new to my channel and you haven't watched any of my cleaning videos yet, welcome. And for returning viewers, hello, good to see you. And I hope you hit that subscribe button for me and ring that bell. I really appreciate it. Let me tell you how I go about testing how well a product disinfects. So what I do is I take a petri dish and I label it A, B, and C. I'll take a sterile swab and I'll swab an area that I want to test a disinfectant on. I'll place that sample on B for before. Then I'll disinfect an area according to how the bottle says I should clean. In this case, we're using Dr. Bronner's. Then I will swab again that area and place it in A for after. Section C is my control. I won't put anything in section C. Thank you for watching, and B.V. Armstrong, this one is for you. So before I get started cleaning with Dr. Bronner's, I have to do some research because I don't know much about it. Okay, get Dr. Bronner's website up. Let's find the Castile soap, unscented, and let's see how they suggest we use it. Body uses and household use. There we go, all-purpose cleaning spray. This is what we're gonna make. So it's a quarter cup of the soap, in a quart of water. So it's like a regular spray bottle. Extra microbial punch, you can add tea tree oil. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna stick with just the Dr. Bronner's. So G-I-Y, I don't know what that means. Oh, green it yourself. This is good. So Dr. Bronner's is known for having a natural product, uh, no harsh chemicals, which is great. It may not kill all bacteria, right? It might not but it's uh, supposed to be safer for the environment and especially like septic systems. So it doesn't tell me how long I should let it stay on a surface to disinfect it. So I'm gonna go with a general five minute sit time. Okay, so I just watched this little video. I didn't make you all watch it. They have three different ways for cleaning a toilet. One is to make the all-purpose spray, which we're gonna do. Spray the bowl thoroughly, brush with a toilet brush. So they do say whatever method you choose, you should let the cleaner sit for 10 minutes. In reading their site, one of the things that they suggest, it's not required for their cleaning, but they suggest that you empty your toilet bowl completely. So they suggest that you turn off the water valve, you flush the toilet so that the water does not fill back in, then you clean it, then you turn the water back on, then you flush it. Uh, they say it's optional. I'm not going to do that because I don't do that for any of my other toilet cleaning and I don't think that's realistic for when I'm normally cleaning the house and I don't think it's realistic that most people are going to shut off their water in order to clean a toilet.
so I by accident put the before in slot A. So I'm going to cross off A right now and write B for before. I'm going to make this one A for after. Now for some results. Dish number one, bathroom sink. Well, this is looking fantastic. So B for before, we see all sorts of different bacterial colonies, couple different sizes and shapes there, so different types of bacteria. And in A after, I'm gonna give this a really good look. I don't see any at all. I see zero colonies on A. So I'd say that Dr. Bronis is very effective at disinfecting my bathroom sink, the bathroom faucet handle. So as you can see in the before, we didn't have that much bacteria on my bathroom faucet handle, which is great. So I count about 13 colonies, so not a lot. And there are just up in the corner in A, so just up in the corner here, and after there are two. So I would say Dr. Braun is, is effective at cleaning the bathroom faucet. Normally, I like to see more bacterial growth. I have a new camera, so I'm having difficulty moving my like spatial relations. So just like, sorry if I'm moving a lot. So normally I like to see more bacteria, I'm pointing in the wrong spot. So normally I like to see more bacterial growth in B for before to really consider it to be a really good clean. So I mean, for, for what we see here, it's good, but I would like to see more of a decrease, but my faucet handle must've been kind of clean to start with, which is a good thing. The toilet base. All right, this is interesting. So we see a couple of different sizes of colonies. So in before, we see some, let's call them small, medium, and large size. And in after, I'm seeing medium and large size. So I would say Dr. Braun is disinfects and kills some types of bacteria that's on my toilet seat, but most certainly not all. Would I say it's a super effective disinfectant for a toilet base? No, I wouldn't. The toilet seat. So this was the underside of the toilet seat. And you can see here, we had some sort of mishap happen, right? Because our B for before has less bacterial colonies than our A for after. So I don't wanna count this one when I'm looking at Dr. Braun's effectiveness because clearly I made a mistake in swabbing or I didn't clean the same area that I swabbed after, I didn't do a good job spraying. So let's just kind of forget this one. The kitchen counter. So you can see here in B for before, we have a variety of different bacteria growing there. We have some big ones, some small ones, some yellow ones, some white ones, lots of variety of bacteria in that B for before section. And in A for after, I got nothing. I can't see any bacterial colonies at all in side A for after. So I would say Dr. Bronis is extremely efficient at disinfecting my kitchen counter. The kitchen sink, the part with the strainer. So I chose to do the strainer because I know that's an area in the sink that's always loaded with bacteria, and I was right. So let's look at B-Wood before. Tons of bacteria smeared in there. You can't count them at all. And then we look at side A for after, and we can see a decrease. There is definitely a decrease in bacteria, not as significant that we're seeing in the other things, but definitely a decrease. So I would say it does okay at disinfecting the kitchen sink strainer. The kitchen sink, the sink portion, not the strainer. So I do wanna point out quickly, I do have a little squiggly line here, and that is because when I was drawing the uh, divider marks with Shopee before I got started, I made A, section A too small, so I just squiggled it out and made a bigger spot for me to do A for after. 
So let's look at beef root before, lots of different bacteria. So we have different sizes, different shapes, um, multiple bacteria there. It's a good, good sampling of bacteria. And before, in A for after, nothing. Nothing, not one bacterial colony in A for after. So I would say Dr. Bronner's is extremely efficient at disinfecting my kitchen sink. The toilet bowl. So as you can see here in B from before, we have a lot of, lot of bacterial colonies and also A for after, we also have an awful lot of bacterial colonies. So I think it's safe to say from this experiment that Dr. Bronner's is not an effective disinfectant for my toilet bowl. I enjoyed testing Dr. Bronner's. This is actually a cleaner that I had been wanting to try for a really long time. So I'm really happy I had the opportunity to use it. So I will say that in looking at their website, and please correct me if I'm wrong, put in the comments if I made a mistake here, but I believe on their website, I did not see any claims of, it kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria. I didn't see those claims anywhere on their site or on their packaging. There's an awful lot of written words on this packaging, and I did not read every single word. Full admission, I just skimmed most of it, went to their website, had a look around, and started using it immediately. All right. So all in all, I was impressed with Dr. Bronner's, but let's take a final look at the results all combined together. So good. What are the places that I felt that Dr. Bronner's did a really good job at disinfecting my home, my bathroom sink, the kitchen counter, and the kitchen sink? Did a great job. You can see those before and afters. There was, there were no bacteria after. It was fantastic. Did a really great job. I gave an okay to the bathroom faucet because there really wasn't a lot of bacteria to start with on my bathroom faucet. I also gave an okay to the kitchen drain. This is a really tough place to clean and disinfect. And the two places that I gave it a fail was the toilet base and the toilet bowl. I really didn't see much difference in the before and after in those two areas. And yes, there was one uh, test that we did, the toilet seat, where I just disregarded it because we had more bacteria in the after than the before. So we're just not going to count that in our result. I just wanted to put it up here so you just to remind you of that was that result. So I'd say there's lots of pros to using Dr. Bronner's. It seems from their website, there are lots of different uses for it. And I actually look forward to trying it in different um, parts of my house, not just doing bacterial testing. So that's something I'm looking forward to doing. There is one con that I came up with while I was using this product. And that is I did purchase the unscented version of it. So here's the deal. When you're spraying to clean, right? Usually you have the scent, so you know you're like breathing it in. And so that can kind of give you like a little heads up, like, whoa, whoa, you might just want to give yourself some air. I couldn't, I couldn't smell anything, right? Yeah, it was just spraying, so spraying, and then all of a sudden it would get stuck in my throat and I would cough. <coughs> <coughs> so that's my own fault for having an unscented product. But it's something to be aware of that if you're using unscented products, that you do have to be careful not to inhale as you're cleaning and to make sure you do still work in a well-ventilated area. And again, thank you, B.B. Armstrong, for suggesting that I give Dr. Bronner's a try. I really enjoyed this one. I do have another video that should be coming in a little bit. So I have uh, in queue about 15 viewer requests right now. So I'm getting there, but a couple of them do include using Dr. Bronner's in other sort of mixtures, like homemade mixtures. So stay tuned for that. If you're curious and you wanna see some of my results before I'm able to uh, edit them and put them on YouTube, join my Patreon page. On that page, I put results real time as I get them. So just as an example, today's January 7th that I'm actually recording this and these results are on my Patreon page right now. So thank you for watching very much. I really appreciate it. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe and happy cleaning.